Why communism doesn't work? Do you know that bees work in a perfectly synchronized way with their swarm? They don't have to be taught or trained how to behave and work. For example, the first thing a bee does is clean the cell where it was born for the next larva or to store honey, whatever the hive needs. It then has various roles like building the honeycomb with beeswax, repairing the hives, foraging for nectar and pollen, etc. All of these duties and roles are built into the bee's DNA. As the bee grows older, hormones are released which activate the part of their DNA that tell them what job they need to do and when. Ant colonies are the same way. Individual ants behave according to their DNA and hormones. For example, a couple of days after an ant dies, it releases a chemical that makes the live ants take the dead body to a section in the colony which is called the graveyard. If you spray the same chemical on a live ant, it will walk to the grave and lie there, even though it's still alive. My point here is that bees and ants form complex and productive societies with zero quarrels, courts, police, no moral religion or code. And they do all of this because of the programming in their DNA. They do what they're programmed to do all their life at great advantage to their colonies and swarms. This is the communist utopia. Humans don't operate like this. We do not simply adopt societal roles at birth that are decided by our DNA or hormones. We have the ability to think for ourselves. We do not rely on our DNA to tell us what to do and when. This is a big thing that makes us different from bees and ants. We have a sense of self and we think for our own best interests. A bee that collects twice as much nectar as the other bees does not think that it deserves something more than the other bees. She does not feel discriminated against when the other bees get the same rewards as it did, even though they collected only half as much nectar as her. A bee does not think that if she is going to get the same amount of benefits, regardless of how much nectar it collects, then she should do the minimum amount of work possible. Humans, for the most part, think for their own best interests. We're talking about 99% of humanity, not the exceptions to the rule. Most humans are selfish and have an ego. Anyone who disagrees with this is either naive or lacks life experience. Selfishness, that is, what's in it for me? Competitiveness, that is, do I have more than my neighbor? And the concept of fairness, that is, am I getting the same stuff for the same effort? These three are innate parts of human nature. Let me elaborate further. Selfishness. When a man works, he works for his benefit. He wants to get something from his work, be it money, sex, food for himself or for his loved ones. Most humans don't do work for its own sake. And this is especially true for works that are repetitive, like the one in factories or fields. Man would not toil on the field if he did not get to eat what grew on it. Man would not slave away in a factory if producing trinkets didn't pay anything. Man only works without reward when he's forced to do so. That is, he's under threat or duress. The black slaves in America would not have worked on the plantations if it wasn't for the fear of punishment of their masters. Competitiveness, wealth and status are relative. Human nature wants us to be better than our neighbors. You see this in your everyday life. When the average Joe sees that his friend has a new car, he wants to buy a better car to compete, even if he has to go in debt to do so. Women get jealous of their friends' more successful husbands and compete with each other on who has the best purses and dresses. The middle-class person of today lives a much better life than kings of the ages past with his air conditioners and computers. But he doesn't feel like a king because he knows that there are many other people out there doing much better than him. Humans are competitive. They want to be better than their neighbor and they get jealous when they see that others are doing better than them. Even though this is the uglier side of human nature, it is still human nature. It's a part of how evolution wired us. Only the best men pass on their genes, and we have to accept it and design society around it and accounting for it. And thirdly, fairness. 
The concept of fairness is also wired into our genes and is closely tied with competitiveness. People expect equal reward for equal work and they feel discriminated against when they're not given enough reward for their effort or others are getting more reward for the same effort. If you are running a business and you pay the guy who does twice the work the same amount as the guy who does half the work, the guy who does twice the work will either quit or ask to be paid more. If you are a teacher and you give two students different marks for writing the same answer, the student who got the lower grade will ask for a grade revision or will complain that he didn't get an equal grade. If you take two kids who are brothers and you give one of them a chocolate, the brother who doesn't get the chocolate will start crying to his mother and say that he should get a chocolate because his brother also got a chocolate. If you think that fairness is not hardwired in our nature, here is a video of two apes being paid differently for the same work and you should see how they react to it. This is the caption monkey fairness experiment and is clipped from a TED talk by this guy called Frank S. Wall. Getting grape and you will see what happens. So she gives a rock to us, that's the task. And we give her a piece of cucumber and she eats it. The other one needs to give a rock to us. And that's what she does. And she gets a grape. And she eats it. The other one sees that. She gives a rock to us now, gets again cucumber. <laughs> she tests a rock now against the wall. She needs to give it to us. And she gets cucumber again. The reason why communism fails every time it's tried. The reason why communism fails every time it's tried is because communism and to a large extent socialism doesn't account for human nature. Under communism you can't have personal gain because the concepts of money and private property do not exist. Everything belongs to the state and is distributed equally or according to need. The government decides what job a man needs to do and also determines what reward he will get for it. Not only does this demotivate people as they don't get to decide their own occupation, it also goes against man's desire to have more than his neighbor and the principle of fairness. When a man realizes that he will be forced to work a job that he is not particularly interested in performing and that he will be given the same reward regardless of if he is extremely productive or he does the minimum, the vast majority of men will do the minimum. The working man makes a choice to do the least he can while staying out of trouble, not out of laziness, but because he doesn't find it fair that even if he works harder, he gets the same reward as others who didn't work as hard. The same man would not be lazy and would work his ass off if he was promised more reward, money, status, recognition, depending on the person. He w- if he was promised more reward for more effort, he would work harder. This culminates in massive drops of productivity for the communist economy as a whole as most men choose to do the minimum they can without getting punished for it. What this leads to is problems for the government who tries to fix it by issuing quotas for production for workers and tells the government managers of the factories that they need to do whatever it takes to meet those quotas. And if they don't meet those quotas, the managers would be punished. And once things get here, the average person, that is the worker, is reduced to a lowly paid slave who will be sent to prison if he doesn't work as hard as the manager needs him to work. And if the manager is kind, and I know that a lot of you think that you would be kind if you were in that position, know this. If the manager does not meet his production quota, he himself would be sent to prison and the prisons are not comfortable prisons in communist countries. In a cruel twist of fate, the workers who went on strikes to get communism find themselves being sent to gulags if they ever strike again in their new communist regime. Instead of a man freely choosing his occupation and working for personal profit and gain, in communism, a man is assigned a role and given no incentive to work harder 
except that he would be severely punished if he doesn't produce enough. This makes the entire country and system poorer as you never get the best work of man. The best work of man is produced when he has a desire to work and he wants to improve his product because he wants to make more money for personal gain and not when he's trying to meet a government assigned quota. The reason why capitalism makes societies richer and communism makes societies poorer is simply this. Capitalism is aligned with human nature while communism goes against human nature. Many men think I will work really hard so I have more. No man thinks I'm going to work really hard so that everyone around me has exactly the same as me. Communism works in theory because in theory everyone is nice and selfless. Capitalism works in practice because people are people. And I know some of you are likely to be in universities where professors tend to be extremely leftist and pro-communistic. Most of these professors are upper class, tenured, have great job security and live in their theoretical academic bubble as they don't spend enough time in the real world. They don't test their theories because they don't go out enough. Here is a practical experiment that you can run in your head to see why communism doesn't actually work. Imagine that for all of your university exams, instead of you being given the grade you earned, your professor totaled up everyone's grade and then divided them equally among every student. Everyone gets the same grade regardless of whether you worked more or less. How hard would you study in this system? Now, imagine that on a nationwide level. Instead of you getting the grade you earned, the grades of all the students across the country are totaled up and then divided amongst all students. No matter how much you study or how little you study, everyone you know and everyone you don't know gets the exact same grade as you. How hard would you study in this system? How hard do you think the average person would study in this system, especially for boring subjects like history? How hard do you think the bottom 10% of students would study in this new system? For Life Math Money, this was your host Harsh Strongman. If you like this video, click the like button and the subscribe button and let me know what you thought in the comments below. I love to see your comments and I'll give you a response when I see it. Also hit the notification bell because that will notify you when a future video comes out and they come out regularly. And if you think that your life could be better if you had more discipline, take the 90 day self-improvement program. The link is in the description and this program will help you live a much better life. You will start waking up earlier, eat better, lose weight, gain muscle, the whole nine yards. Check it out, it's in the description. We've sold almost 10,000 copies and people love it. It works for everyone who does the program. It's going to work for you and it's going to change your life and it'll do that in 90 days. So go check it out. The link is in the description below.